Hello, welcome to another episode in our citrus series. My name is Brian. I am an avid citrus collector, and today we're going to be talking about the Kamsa. It's also known as the King Tanger in the Western world. There's a lot of talk about it, so uh, pull up a chair, sit back and relax, and I hope to be your uh, guide on this variety. This is a variety that comes from Vietnam originally, and it's a very historically significant plant variety in the citrus world. This plant arrived in the United States in the late 1800s and then and it arrived from Vietnam. The United States Department of Agriculture was very excited about it because it is a variety that grows in a tropical climate and Florida has a climate that mimics uh, the tropical climates of Vietnam and to a certain extent Southern California with its warm climate. This Mandarin uh, at the time is a very tasty Type of citrus so early on the citrus that you found was the navel orange and it was hard to peel and, a, and it wasn't as delicious as it is today so this one they got really excited about and they brought it over and they got I believe a couple of uh, seedlings uh, like this and from there the fruit they collected the seeds and they grew their own plant so it arrived in uh, the United States in 1880 and by 1931, they had a plant that produced fruit of which they took the seeds and they grew their trees from. And that 1931 planting and seeds resulted in a, a mother tree that is housed in some collections in the United States. Um, and one of them is from the Citrus Clonal Protection Program here in Southern California. And we received the budwood, we ordered the budwood and we grafted that budwood onto a few trees uh, we have one on this rootstock that is from uh, a seed of my late dad's Valencia tree. And then this one we have grafted onto a pink lemonade uh, lemon tree. And the third one that we have grafted uh, that's not seen here is one that we grafted onto a Kamsa rootstock. So what's special about the Kamsa? Uh, one of the things that's special about it is that it's a natural hybrid. So that means they found it in nature where it crossed with a pomelo and a, and a mandarin and they got this natural hybrid. And what that means is you can grow its seed and you can get the qualities very close to it. Most of the modern day oranges that or citrus are derived from breeding programs where if you grow it from seed, you're not gonna get the characteristics that you're thinking you're gonna get. That's why we do a lot of grafting. Grafting is a, a Type of cloning where you ensure that you get the qualities of that fruit. Well with the kamsa you can uh, plant the seeds and you can like I just said you can get the qualities that are more likely to get the qualities um, but there's a caveat there are slight changes each time you plant a seed and you can get either better quality same or worse so um, if you find a really good kamsa it's always best to graft it. Uh, this plant comes from uh, Vietnam and in Vietnam in southern Vietnam where the temperatures are very stable the oranges they don't turn uh, the citrus is like mandarins and oranges they're not going to turn to orange uh, that's why on this plant here we have some that are on the green side and we're gonna find out if it's actually um, ripe or not with citrus in like the oranges and the mandarins once it hits a certain temperature drops below a certain temperature the rind actually turns orange. It doesn't ripen the fruit, it just turns it orange. That's why we get that orange color. Um, so there's a lot of co to cover on this variety. I want to make sure I cover everything so I have some show notes here. Okay, first, uh, Kamsa, the name and the translation. With the help of my sister-in-law, um, we figured out the linguistics of the translation. Uh, Kam in Vietnamese means orange, and Sa, it means exquisite. So things that are exquisite way back when they were very limited to uh, wealthy people or um, all the way up to royalty. So we think that the translation from uh, King from Kamsa to King Tanger, which means the King of the Tangerines, might be from that uh, understanding, the linguistic understand understanding way back in the 1800s. So that's why it's called the King Tanger. Uh, in terms of significance to the citrus world, this is the what I regard as the grandfather of, of some of the modern-day Mandarin varieties. 
because from this gamsa they they bred some uh, child varieties including the California honey mandarin and then a few other several other varieties and then under that one is the encore variety and that variety then gave uh, children to the modern day varieties that are currently patented by the University of California and uh, a couple of those varieties are the Yosemite Gold variety and um, the other one that's more heat tolerant or cold tolerant. So there's two other varieties and I'm sure there are other varieties that have derived from that. But um, so this is one of the this is why this is a significant uh, Mandarin because some of the Mandarins that we're eating today, uh, they're from this plant or this variety. And let's see. Um, so the king, the king, king tanger, and the will willow leaf is another significant mandarin variety. Uh, those were crossed together, bred together, and they derived some of the varieties that I had just mentioned: the California honey and the encore. Um, in terms of its ripeness or season of maturity, it's between February and. April. So this is known to hold well on the tree. And I took a sample of one around late January, I believe, and it tasted all right. So this one came off of our lemon tree. And from that graph, we had four good sized mandarins. So in terms of its characteristics, it has very bumpy peel. And back in the 1800s and early 1900s this was seen as blemish so it, it they were trying to work out this i'm sure they worked out some of the bumpiness from this the peel um and it's got a very nice uh size to it so this one we we grew on the lemon rootstock our lemon tree which is a more established tree so I, I'd imagine that it's just being able to suck up a lot of nutrients from the ground and in the sun to make a really nice size mandarin because the one that's on our uh, seedling here the mandarins are much smaller so let's let's pick a couple and put it on the camera for a side to side by side and let's clean this one up a little bit so here's one that you can see uh, is greener so we're gonna be tasting taste testing this one to see if how it tastes when it's green and I'm gonna find one that's a little bit more ripe and it looks like this one has more orange on it. So we're going to give this one a taste test as well. So let's put this on the thing so you can see. Let's give it a 360 turn. Um, so those are our mandarins. I'm gonna cut into this one and bisect it so you can see what it looks like. Here it is. It's got a really nice color. Um, the other day when I tasted it, it didn't taste um, super sweet, but it did have a lot of good qualities to it. All right. The other quality about the uh, gamsa that they were really excited about way back when was that you can peel it easily. So that's one of the things that is um, possible with the gamsa. You can peel it easily or relatively easily. And I'm going to um, demonstrate here real quick and show you. So that's how it peels, but I'm I'm gonna actually um, cut this one in half, or actually, I guess the best way to eat it is to peel it. So let's, let's go and peel it. And as I mentioned early on in this episode, the Kamsa is a natural hybrid between the pomelo and the, t and the mandarin. And since it's one of the more wild, closer to the wild, where some of the traits have been bred out of it, it has some of the the undesirable traits like for instance i noticed that on the pith of the uh on the kamsa this white part here it is a little bit it's actually on the bitter side closer to the bitterness you find with a uh, pomelo and at the same time it makes it easy to easier to peel so this pith will actually contaminate the flavor of the juice that's inside so I would I would assume that it's best as a juicing uh, t tangerine so and I just just uh, naturally found the word tangerine as I'm describing it this is also 
considered a tangerine, clementine, those there's some type of nuance between the 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 way you want to call something a tangerine or a mandarin. And um, for me, I find that I call something a tangerine when it's not so easy to peel. Okay, so here we have this um, uh, kamsa that's a little bit riper from this tree. And let's taste test it and see how it tastes. It's still very tart. So maybe um, this is not ready after all. Let's try the green one. Uh, I don't expect it to be any any sweeter. Let's uh, take a segment here. Yep, still very tart. This tree needs more time and we're gonna wait for it to turn uh, orange and maybe we'll come back in a future episode and do a taste testing then. This one on the other hand is nice and ready. You can see by it's really pretty bright orange. I'm gonna juice it and we're gonna taste the juice. Let's put this closer to the camera so you can see the juice going into our container and um, let's see how easy it juices. It juices very easily. I'm pretty excited about it. This is one that we uh, tried a couple of weeks ago. Um, and we had four on the tree and there was a miscommunication with one of our neighbors, uh, which is a good way to put it. And he came by, helped himself to a couple of our King Tanger. Um, so it would have been nice if we had more to juice here and, and show you how it looks. But um, I'm glad we have something after all. Here, here's the juice. It has a nice color to it. It's a really vibrant orange. Let's, let's try it. Wow. Wow. It's actually very sweet. I wouldn't say very sweet, but it's on the sweet side, like uh, higher sweet. So if you caught the previous episode where we uh, tested the Bahabza blood orange, that was very sweet. This is nice and sweet. It doesn't taste. It doesn't taste like a, a tangerine. Uh, tangerines have this really fresh, bright flavor. This is this is almost like a muted uh, orange. It does have more of a tartness, but not like a high acidic tartness where it burns like a, a lemon. So um, this is this is a really nice one to grow. So that's our kamsa citrus plant and the fruit from it. And for this variety, it's one that uh, I have personal relationships with. I was born in, in southern Vietnam in uh, the early 1980, 1981. And at age four, my family or I with my family uh, emigrated to the United States and this orange is perhaps also a personal uh, people. A lot of people from Vietnam that have emigrated have a very uh, personal experience with it. Oranges were very exquisite at the time in the early 80s still. And that some oranges are something that you had on a special occasion. Uh, a lot of the other tropical fruits, they're plentiful and, because they just naturally grow there. Um, the orange, however, not a lot of people grow it, and so it's limited supply, and uh, because it's limited supply, it becomes exquisite. So we had it during special occasions, and for this fruit, I always remember it, especially since in tropical environments like Vietnam, the rind stays green, and then the, the citrus itself is bright orange, so it has a very interesting contrast. And when we come to the United States and we find oranges and they're actually orange. Um, so it gives that memory even a, a, a more profound impact. So it was this citrus variety that got me down the rabbit hole and into grafting and into looking for it. So in the beginning, I thought that the Robertson Naval Orange is the green orange. 
Uh, the reason I thought it was is because the Robertson neighbor orange, which we have a plant of, it matures in December. And in December, uh, that's just when the cool, cold hits it and it starts to turn orange. Uh, but at the same time, it may still also be a little bit green. So I thought that was our Kamsa. But after doing more research, it turns out it's not. The Kamsa is a, a, unique, a unique thing in its own. And I'm very happy and fortunate that it's available for ordering via the Budwood program. And that's why we have some of these trees here. Um, so this is a really cool, uh, historically significant citrus in the citrus world, because from this citrus derive some of the modern citrus that we enjoy because it's easy to peel uh, and has a lot of flavor. And more importantly, because it's seedless, um, so that's, that's our Kamsa, also known as the King Tanger. And I, I hope you really enjoyed this episode because this is a really, really cool plant for us. And I'm happy to be able to share it after being able to graft it. So we have another graft on a different tree that we're going to be excited about. It didn't produce fruit last year. So this year... Uh, we're hoping that it, it will produce fruit. Actually, it, the fruit didn't set. It did blossoms, but it didn't set. And I'm um, very hopeful that we're going to get fruit from it this year. And also, that plant is a uh, plant that we grow from a kamsa seed. So we left a portion to see if it will eventually fruit and see how that tastes. So that's probably, I would say, another 7 or 10 years down the line because it could take up to 15 years for something seed grown to produce fruit. So we have that one to be excited about. And then um, we're going to come back and revisit this citrus when it ripens later in the year, maybe around April is my guess, uh, at the rate it's turning orange. And we'll talk about it some more, especially with, we'll talk about the rootstock uh, effect. We're testing that out. And um, I want to hold the responses to your questions about rootstocks and how they affect the plant until April. So we're going to come back in April and talk about that. I hope you really enjoyed this episode, uh, as I uh, just said, and we're going to end it today uh, with a look at our King Tanger Gamsa Orange.